so much focus in the last decade has been, how do I grow a company? How do I scale? How do I, you know, as an owner, turn it around? And what happens when an owner thinks like that is then they instill that way of thinking in their people. So their employees become very robotic and transactional and they lose touch with why they're even there in the first place. So whether you hear yourself saying this or not, what I hear you saying is like, alliterating one of the core fundamentals of any CX operation, which is how are you improving lives of their customers and the employees? Which is ironic because that's in Kaizen, the fundamental piece of Kaizen that's been lost. It's not how do you improve process to increase efficiency or productivity. It's how do you improve someone's life and as a result, improve productivity and efficiency. It's actually like the opposite. And that's what I hear you saying. And you're very, whether you know it or not, very in touch with the fact that you're transforming lives through finance. You're not doing finance and transforming lives. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I I don't think I, I look at it specifically in that light. Yeah. It's just what I do, right? <laughs> that's why I said before, I don't think I'm anything special. It's just just something I'm doing that I support wholeheartedly. So you're in the middle of getting your MBA. You have worked at the Honda Federal Credit Union to start what's called Mindful Minute. And now you've got some unique opportunities to level, level up yourself in the organization, which we can't talk about in specifics right now, but soon enough, fingers crossed. Talk to me about how you got involved and like looking back, what learning lessons do you wish others would know about how you've elevated your career at, at Honda? Yeah, definitely. I would say it's, it, again, nothing new. It's the age old uh, idea of, uh, of networking and just and accepting opportunities that come across and developing opportunities um, that you see. I, uh, so the first thing, one of the things I did was started looking for opportunities outside of the credit union um, to build my network. So working with relationships with CUNA, which is Credit Union National Association, a great organization that supports credit unions across America. So I jumped on a few committees with them, developed ideas, and not just opportunities where those individuals could help you, but you're learning from them. And taking those learning opportunities and bringing it back to the credit union and bringing um, those different ideas that might not have been thought about before. Um, outside of that, you know, every day I just come in with a smile on my face. Every day I come in ready to work. Every day I come in happy. I don't let coming in on a Monday make me sad because I'm happy to be here. And I think that really affects the individuals around you to an extent, not just the branch that I work at, but people on the second floor, the third floor, people at other buildings, people in other departments understand when they call me, they're not going to get someone who doesn't want to talk. Mm. I get a lot of calls and I would like to think it's because I'm happy to help. Building those relationships builds more opportunities. People think of you when they want to work with someone. So that's developed into multiple committees within the credit union and is also developed a rapport and an image that people have of me um, for uh, if any opportunities were to happen in the future, something that I could possibly reach out and, and you know, hopefully succeed in moving up with the company because it's that image. You know, I, I would hope and I would think it's just me. Nobody wants to promote someone who's going to be a drag you know, nobody wants to promote someone who's going to be depressing to work with. So I just come in, I have I try to be happy no matter what the situation is. Um, mind frame is a huge thing. Always would go into work and work every day with the mind frame that I'm going to succeed. And if I don't succeed, I'm just going to keep trying. I'm not going to, you know, fail on what I'm looking to do. There is a point where you can say yes to everything. So you do have to say no sometimes. But in the beginning, I said yes to everything. When things came off my table, I said, yes, I want to be in that community. I want to accept that work. Bring it to me. No, I didn't make any more money. Yes, I'm being more work than other individuals, but it's also allowing me the opportunity to prove myself. So it's saying yes to those that um, those opportunities. But saying no is a lot harder than saying yes. 